Today we're going to talk with Corey and Granny about crochet. Granny is the queen of crochet. She crochets ev literally every day of the world. And I'll let her tell you more in a minute about her enjoyment of it. Uh, she taught Corey and Katie to crochet. She wanted to teach me, well, or when I was young, I wanted her to teach me, and she didn't have time. And then by the time she had time to teach me, I just wasn't interested or I was too busy as a young mother. So I never learned to crochet, but Corey and Katie both can crochet, but especially Corey has really, um, I think she's Granny's uh, successor when it comes to the queen of crochet in our family. She likes it as much as Granny does. So today we're going to talk to them about their creativeness when it comes to crochet. Granny, how did you get started crocheting? Well, uh, my husband and my sons would watch the ball games on TV. And I couldn't get in interested in the ball games. So to content myself, I started crocheting. I bought me a book that taught me how. And I could pass the time crocheting while I watched the ball games. And it evened us out, you know, because they liked to watch ball games and I didn't. So that's how I really got started. When do you think that was, when you first started? Oh, 10 or 15 years ago. <laughs> it had to be, it had to be way more than that because you crocheted us stuff when we were babies and I'll be 25 yeah. in less than two months, so. Yeah. I would say probably at least 20 years, yeah. has to be. Yeah. But what about your family? Was there people that crocheted in your family? Yes, so my, you didn't crochet when you were young? My mother crocheted and she tried to teach me and all I could learn all I could do was make a chain stitch. And I tried to crochet some more, and I everything I crocheted just curled up like it would fit the bottom of the glass. And so after I tried that, I gave up and never tried again until, like I say, I wanted to content myself while I watched the ball games. And, uh, I would get interested in my crochet and, and the time would pass really fast. So what are some of your favorite things to make? Oh, I love it all. It's hard to say a favorite. But when you and Katie were babies, I thought I couldn't crochet a baby blanket. And that had me worried to death. So I bought me a pattern book with baby blankets and I made you both real pretty baby blankets. Oh yeah, we still got those packed away. And then after that, when you started to school, I made, I started making ponchos for you to wear to school. And they were easier to make than the baby blankets. We have so many ponchos that she made and I just remember wearing them to school and the other kids <laughs> were kind of jealous because because they were really neat and they liked them and especially hats. I remember hats that you made um, that people loved and um, there was a little boy uh, who I went to school with and he, he you made a hat and it was out of black yarn but it was like variegated and it had like specks of like orange, blue, just like colors of the rainbow in it and he loved that hat and he called it the M&M hat because it had all those colors. And didn't he want you to make him, a, us to make him a hat? Probably, yeah. <laughs> But we never did. No. <laughs> so what's some of the hardest things for you to make? Or you feel like it's hard? Well, uh, for a long time I could just make uh, uh, what you call it to go on the back of the sofa. What would you call it? Uh, just like a runner for the back of the couch? An afghan? Or an afghan. Afghan. That was all I could make. And it took so much yarn to make one of them. And I, finally I found me a sweater pattern and I said, gee, it only takes two or three skeins to make a sweater. And that's how I got started on making sweaters because they were so much faster and easier than making the afghans. And it's funny though that you say that because for me, <laughs> I would almost think, now yeah, the sweater would probably not take as much time, but for me, the afghan would be easier. It's hard to make a sweater, no matter which way you make it, there's several ways, but to get the armholes and the head hole and the fit right, that's difficult. Yeah, that's true. 
but I love it. I just love to crochet. I get interested in it. And before I know it, the day's gone. It's time to cook supper. And I have to quit till yeah. tomorrow. So what do you do with all the things that you make? Well, I try to find somebody to give them to. And uh, for my granddaughters, I make sweaters for Christmas. And you have to start early when you make. And I make every female in the family uh, my grandson's wives and uh, my grandchildren, my granddaughters. And you have to start early to get that many sweaters made that is true. before Christmas. So I've been working on that. And then I, I found a book that had this little Christmas baskets in it. And I thought, oh, that would be so pretty at Christmas to fill it up with uh, candy and whatever you wanted yeah. to give someone. So I've been working on them for Christmas too. Nice, those are beautiful. And I just got the pattern off of a lab yarn label. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've got two little great granddaughters and I crochet dresses for, for them. They seem to like them pretty good. For being in Mark, I had this one uh, baby blanket that I thought was so pretty, but it was for a boy. And uh, I went ahead and made one for Ben and one for Mark. They had little uh, doodlebug cars, uh, different colored cars on them, and you make th like this running across the road on those little cars. And I thought they're so pretty, I made one for Ben and Mark. And, went ahead and give it to them. So, so far I haven't got a great grandson, but yeah, there's a quilt waiting for them oh, yeah. if I do have one. And she's actually so generous enough that she has made baby clothes for Katie and I, for April, um, uh, for Mark as well, just the other, other grandkids, even though we don't have kids yet. So I've got those packed away and they are just the sweetest things. So we appreciate that. I love to make them. I love to make the little baby clothes. I'm really hooked on crochet. I love it. So let's talk about some of the stuff that's hanging behind us. So we have this beautiful jacket that's kind of the style of coat of many colors. How did you learn to make this? Where did you learn to make it? I saw it in a book. Some woman had designed it and I ordered the pattern. The pattern costs $20. But I got, I just loved to make them jackets. And some lady asked me how long it took me to make a jacket. And I said, well, it depends on how many times my husband will cook supper. <laughs> and let me sit and crochet. Yeah. Because he would, he liked to cook. Yeah. And I would, it usually take me about a week to make one. That would take me a but, month at least. I, uh, maybe over a week. Like I said, it depended on how much cooking my husband wanted to do because I'd have to quit off and cook supper. I gotta say, I mean, I love everything you've made, but these style jackets, and there's another one over here to my left, these style jackets are, are one of my favorite things you've ever made. She made us, uh, Katie and I, well, you've actually made me more than one, but you made us one that was kind of just all kinds of different colors. Um, and I think I was in I was in uh, elementary school or grade school, and I wore that thing. I still have it, and basically wore it out. And people everywhere I went, people bragged on it and said, "Oh my gosh, where did you get your jacket?" You know, and I would tell them, "Oh, my grandma made this, but it fit perfect. I still got it." Uh, and everyone always complimented that. It's just such a neat pattern, and it's so cool. I mean, you can just use any colors. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I love it. It's been well worth the $20. Yeah. Because I made me a jacket for winter time, one for spring and one for fall. And I, they're so comfortable to wear. They're stretchy and they stretch when you move. Yeah, and they're also and, very warm. Mm-hmm. They're very warm, yeah. So let's talk about the beautiful blanket behind us, this green blanket. Where did you, where did you get this pattern and how did you start uh, making it? 
My uncle's wife, she crocheted always, she crocheted. And she passed away, she was, I think, 94 when wow. she passed away. But she had bought some little patterns from, from some old ladies. And her daughters didn't crochet, so they knew I did, and they gave me the little patterns she'd bought from some old ladies. And I started making the blankets, and I just loved that pattern. And it's just because they, she get they gave it to me. It was their mother's. Mm, that's sweet. It's one of my favorite things to do to crochet those blankets. So what about the dresses hanging here behind us? Where did you learn how to do them? Well, I found a, a pattern. I had a little pattern. And uh, I have two granddaughters. One is three going on four, and one is just turned two. And I have a hard time sizing them from one to the other, but I, when I make their little dresses, they seem like they really like them. So it's a gift I can give them yeah. for Christmas or for birthdays and not have to run to the store and buy something. Yeah, and handmade gifts, of course, are the best. <laughs> so what about this sweater over here above you? Yeah, um, I let Katie try it on. And it looks so good on her. I said, well, you can have it, but I need to keep it for one to go by to make some more. So she said, okay, but she, Katie really liked it. And is that what you're working on this year for people for Christmas? Uh, sweaters. Yeah, I'm making sweaters for all the females in the family. Nice. And then I started, I got this little basket pattern off of one of my crochet labels. And I thought they would be nice for Christmas too. Yeah, for sure. But where did you get your a pattern for those baskets you made? You know, that's a good question. I don't remember. I think I got this pattern offline somewhere. I don't remember if I watched a YouTube video or I uh, just got it offline. But it, it's it's fun to make you use, like, I think some people call it t-shirt yarn. It's just really big, thick yarn to try to make the basket stick up more, but it's really fun. I love to crochet, and Granny taught me to crochet when when I was a little girl, she taught me, and all I could make, like she said, were just the chains. And it's really hard because if you crochet too tight, then you can't go back in what you crocheted to keep keep going. And, and that was kind of my problem. But I still have the first crochet hook that she gave me. It's like a little bitty pink plastic one, but that's really sweet. I still have that. Uh, I, I had some of that yarn, and I tried to make the baskets, and I couldn't do it. It's kind of, it's almost hard on your hands in a way. Like the bigger and the thicker the yarn is, it makes your hands tired pretty fast. And it's hard because you got to use a big hook and kind of work with it to get it to pull through. I just didn't have the patience, I guess, to do it right. So I gave up on that and went back to my sweaters. Well, and that's the fun thing is there's so many patterns, so much yarn, so much possibility that if you don't like what you're doing, you can just put it down and pick up the next thing. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, the my wintertime coat, that I, sweater coat that I made, uh, April had bought me some yarn for Christmas. And I thought, well, these colors would go together and make a pretty jacket. And I've been wearing that jacket every winter for three or four years now. It's been three or four years ago she bought me that yeah. yarn. And I never would have thought about putting those colors together, you know, purple and green. Yeah. But they turned it. It turned out really pretty. I think that's one of my favorite things about crocheting is just the colors. There's endless possibility of what you can do. Yeah, and the color needs to fit the, go with the pattern. Yeah. Yeah. My husband told me one time. Of course, he's passed away now, but he said, "I know what you're going to do." said, you're not going to do nothing but crochet and canned green beans. Mm -hmm. said, that's what you're going to do. Those are two really good things. Yeah. <laughs> so that's, that's not bad. Green beans are awful good in the wintertime. Mm -hmm. So since Pat passed away, you've crocheted a lot. 
Yeah, it keeps me from being so lonesome. And every time I'm crocheting, I remember what he said. He knew what I was going to do. I was just going to crochet and candy green beans. And I crochet flowers and put them by his grave and try to change them with the holidays. And I think if he knew, he'd be proud of that. He had a little friend there. Yeah, I think he would He would be really proud of that. For sure. Sometimes if I have a problem with my thread or I need a different color, I can always call on Corey and she understands because she crochets too. Well, I'm lucky to have you to teach me and I can call on you when I need help. So it's really, really wonderful that I have one granddaughter that crochets. April didn't want to learn because her mother crochets and anything she needed her mother could make. Yeah. You know. But it it's just a habit and I just love it. I never I never thought I'd like it like I do. But it it passes the time and then you have gifts ready. To give, yeah, and you don't have to go to the store and buy something. Yeah, that's true for Christmas and birthdays. Well, thank you for talking to us, Granny. Uh, what are you most excited about? Before we end the video, what are you most excited about now? Well, I'm, I've been working on the sweaters for Christmas and haven't got them all made yet. But on one of my crochet labels, I found this little basket pattern. And I was, I thought that'd be so nice that Christmas could could fill it with candy and nuts or whatever you want to give someone. Yeah. And it don't take long to make one of them, so it's not like making a sweater. Yeah, that's so true. I, I'm really looking forward to making them to give people for Christmas and all my friends and people that I want to give a gift. Yeah, that's what they'll be getting. <laughs> Actually, one more thing before we go. I want to get this coat down for you guys to get a closer look. So I wanted to give you guys a closer look of this beautiful jacket. It's really cool. It's got pockets. I love the big buttons. These buttons are so sturdy because they've actually been sewn on with the yarn itself. And then she makes these beautiful hats that go with it. So these are pretty awesome. Craftsmanship of lots of different kinds, not just crocheted woodwork and blacksmith and any kind of other fiber art, wood turning, anything is really popular in Appalachian culture. So if you're not like me and you don't have a uh, granny to help you learn how to crochet, uh, my suggestion would be to look up some YouTube videos. There's a lot of good channels that uh, teach beginner crochet. There's a lot of good books. So thank you guys for watching this video. We hope you enjoyed it, but mostly we hope you'll drop back by often and help us as we celebrate Appalachia.